It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solid Term Mega Tournament where we have to take care of some bittersweet business. So I have been, I was, I was skimming through some, some older videos today to just kind of remember what happened, some of the stuff, you know, like I can't remember what games people have played, much less like what kind of relationships they have. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to retain all of that unless I just spend my life re-watching Real People videos. Um, but I did catch one thing that I think is really important, and that is at the end of the game Fallen City of Karez, which wasn't even that long ago, um, Watermelon got eliminated. Now, I totally messed up the calculation on her points. I, 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 you can watch that video and you can catch my mistake. It's not that difficult to see. Sometimes when I multitask too much, like if I try to do things on camera, uh, I, I short circuit. And, you know, I, I'm sorry, um, and I forgive you for not catching it, because if you're watching the tournament you should, and I make a stupid mistake, you should be able to see that and tell me. Maybe some of you try to tell me, but I can't hear you unless you type or something. I can't hear that either, but I can read that, and then I would know that maybe I made a mistake. So if there's any other mistakes like that, I'm going to show you right now that I'm going to turn around and I'm going to rectify those mistakes. So... Watermelon's back on the board. She has the points she should have. I don't know where her card is, but as soon as I find it, she is going to be replacing Chinky in Innovation because I, while I was going back, I was thinking, you know, just because I, I made a mistake in the, the negative, negative 750 cutoff point. It's supposed to be negative 700 and you're out. But I for I just 750 is kind of a number you use more often than 700, so I thought it was 750, and so I let a couple characters slide and stay in. Um, one of those is Chinky. He's at negative negative 748. Sorry, Chinky, that's above negative negative 700. I think if you have some sort of like process, and you make a mistake in the process, you don't need to go forward with it. You can go back and you can fix it. And it's sad that that, that that means Chinky's no longer in the tournament. I think it's kind of poetic in the case of Dick, because Dick, if you recall, in that game of This War of Mine, there were several like false obituaries where we thought he was gone, and then it turned out he wasn't. Maybe not several, a couple. But this is kind of that obituary in reverse, where we thought he just barely eked out of survival, and it turns out he should not be in the tournament any longer. And it's hard for me. So, as I'm sure it is hard for you. Dick had a lot of fans. So, sorry that has to be the way it is, but the tournament is not going to have any meaning if there aren't certain rules that we follow. So, if I set up something like that, I can't apply it to some characters, and some people have been eliminated for being over 700, and not all the characters. The real people, multi game solitaire mega tournament is not fair, but it's not completely unfair either. So if we, if we state something, we're going to go with that. And All right, that nasty business and kind of happy business. It'll be nice to see Watermelon again. I can picture, I'll know her face when I see it. I just don't know where I put the card. I have cards all over the house, so I'll find her. And then she'll come back in. Um, so let's, let's, let's turn our attention away from all that business to the real business at hand here, which is we're going to play... Figures in the Sand expansion, just that with the basic set of innovation. And this is going to be kind of fun because all the people playing were in Pablo Origins together. If you watch that video series, you'll know these people very well. And it'll be fun to see them tread in the sand. Um, I've been, I, I, I watched a little bit of my last video that used this expansion. I kind of talked about the expansion a lot. I feel better about it. I do think um, than I did then. I do think that all the expansions after Echoes of the Past have kind of taken away of the kind of the thematic flavor or the subject matter flavor of the game. I, I know I try to rationalize it by saying this is not a figure, it's an idea about a figure, this is not a city, it's an idea of the city, the idea of the artifact, but for some reason the specificity uh, just kind of makes it feel differently. Like when I used to play just with the basic set or just with the basic set in Echoes, I could get this kind of like, I, I, I could step back and take, you know, a look at my city, or not my city, my civilization, and kind of get a flavor for it just from the innovations that were face up. That's kind of lost now, uh, maybe because I don't, 
know who all the figures are as much, but they just have too much of a face of their own that it, it's it's harder for me to like bind those together than the more abstract things. Though although some of the things are kind of specific, like Reformation, that's kind of specific. It feels uh, still more gassy and like airy than like an actual person or an actual town or an actual object. So we're not going to talk about that anymore. We're going to play, okay? I'm sorry there's so much business, but sometimes in the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament, like in life, as in life, you have to have business. And sometimes you have to have pleasure. All right, and here we have some familiar faces, Pegasus, Giraffe, and Flush all ready to play. Flush got riding to start with. Giraffe got the wheel. Pegasus is going to start, however, with oars. And she is going to go ahead and do this demand right now. We'll see if Flush has a card with a crown. It's not going to affect Giraffe. He does not. So um, this is still going to work out for Pegasus, though, because what she would like to do is she would like to get one of those nice figure cards. So Giraffe's got a copy. No, the no card thing were transferred, so she draws a one. Pegasus gets a one, Pegasus gets a figure. Just as a quick aside before we get into um, more play, it's just a businessy sort of day. I mean, I'm in a business mood. I'm wearing a collar shirt after all. Um, that's one thing that I like about playing with all the expansions. Uh, what just happened with Pegasus is it makes sharing each, each expansion, uh, with the exception of Echoes, I think, makes some element of the game that's maybe not as fun or is less pleasant. It gives it some sort of like nice aspect. So in the, the artifacts and in the cities, the, the melding action, it gives it, it makes it more fun, makes it more likely that you want to do it. And the figures does a great job of that with the sharing. It makes sharing a lot more attractive. And it makes um, maybe even like, having the most, having icon dominance maybe sometimes not as attractive as it would be, which I think is nice. It just kind of rounds out all the or all the corners of the game and makes the whole thing this kind of sphere that you can't, you can kind of just turn around and around and go all sorts of different ways with. It really rolls. Flush drew and melded a two. It was kind of a painful decision for him because um, now he has the icons to copy Giraffe, which is painful in two ways. One, she is going to be able to get a green card out of it, but more so, um, he was, you know, he's using writing, so he's trying to get ahead in age. That's just going to make more people draw one so that everyone's going to catch up to his two. So he's not going to have the advantage of that, but maybe he'll get something out of those cards. Draft's turn. And that's exactly what Draft did. She dogma the wheel twice, which gave her two green cards and got her some twos. Um, the reason he did it instead of keep it is he was worried that maybe she had archery or someone had archery and they would just take his two from his hand if he drew two twos. Because th then they could just take both of them and then it's kind of like, oh, well, he wasted his whole turn uh, to get a couple ones back to Pegasus. Although he had other options, Flush really wants to get ahead of people in age. So he's uh, he used road building to meld two cards. Uh, Giraffe also got to do it. And then he's going to use tools in order to return a bunch of ones. Which one does he want on the bottom? I think he wants the masonry on the bottom in order to draw and meld a three. And no one gets to copy that. Now he has alchemy, which he can use to jump ahead even further on his next round. Everything's coming up flush. Draft used her construction to take cards from both Flush and Pegasus, and then she melded the figure she got from Flush. That's going to give her, she's going to be able to take the advancement decree uh, whenever she wants to now. Uh, so their belief for her, and she's also close to getting the Empire Achievement if she can be the first person to have five colors down. She's got the color in her hand, but not the actions to do it. And after a round of turns where Flush got into Era 4 with his alchemy, um, she's able to do it. She uses her, con she melds agriculture, uses her construction, gets a couple more cards from Pegasus, and Pegasus is supposed to get this too, and then takes the Empire Achievement. All right, let's come to Pegasus. Pegasus has this fun Sargon of Akkad. Uh, if she would meld something over a color that's um, of equal value, she tucks it instead. All right, so she's going to use its action, Inspire action. I don't like this in the newer edition, that they have this little thing up here instead of having the sunburst from, from the originals. Just a little gripe I wanted to tell you. So... 
Oh, that color is of equal. Oh, so, so she doesn't tuck that. She actually keeps the masonry out and then draws it too. Now she keeps losing cards, so I don't know that she's really going to try to um, do the masonry if if uh, giraffe is going to just keep taking her cards. Masonry is a way you get the monument achievement by melding four tower cards. Uh, she's going to go with mysticism, which also kind of works with this. Just to cut, draw and reveal a one, so she gets to meld it. And draw one, and there's that monotheism, and she is going to be able to do it on her turn if she wants to. So Flush used alchemy once. Um, he keeps using it and not getting anything that's very useful to him. Uh, they, like, perspective, you have to have cards in your hand. This is, they have to, no one has a score pile. This has a, to do with score pile, so none of that's very helpful. He's going to try it again. This is something Flush likes. This is going to bring him up in age. So now he has experimentation. Let's move to draft. Giraffe held off on uh, getting her advancement decree this turn because she wanted to jump up to five instead of four. Instead, the advancement lets you draw a card two ages higher than your highest top card. So she drew, she used the wheel, which Pegasus had to copy, uh, melded the figure she got from it, which is a nice one, which makes it so she doesn't have to return uh, fade figures. Normally, you can only have one figure on your board at a time. So she's got that. So then when she does the advancement decree, she'll get to five. However... There's monotheism. Um, so Pegasus is doing monotheism right now. She has the most towers, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to put a crimp in both Giraffe and Pegasus's plans. So she's going to take both of these things. Oh, not, not Giraffe and Pegasus, Giraffe and Flush's plans. Um, if you heard that and I didn't correct it, you should probably tell me. Like, if I said that and I didn't come back and say, oh, I made a mistake like I just did, if I didn't catch it, help me. Help, be my safety net, please. All right, so they're all going to draw and tuck some cards right there and there. And she gets the four, but it's going under Sargon of Akkad. Now Pegasus has enough for it, the first achievement because she has six points. She's going to go ahead and take it. And everyone else is going to get a figure. All right, pretty good turn for Pegasus. Stymied her opponents and helped herself. That's what you want to do. Flush is going to do alchemy again. This time, everyone's going to have to copy. Um, this could be really bad for Giraffe, because if she has to lose her whole hand, that's going to keep her from doing the expansion decree, which she still had as an, as an option, even though she lost her advancement decree. So we'll start with Giraffe. She's going to draw two fours. If either of them is red, she loses everything. It's not. So she's going to meld a card from her hand and score a card from her hand. I'm going to do that off camera because that's just a little unwieldy right now. So I have to look at her whole hand. All right, so he got a little revenge on Pegasus. Pegasus is going to return her whole hand. And I'll do that off camera too and just go ahead and do Flush's thing with that. If she has no fours though, Flush is going to just lose the cards too. Yeah. Oh no, he's only going to draw one four, but Pegasus will put it in such a way that he'll draw the red, because you can decide the order which you return it. Draft just melded William Shakespeare, now she's going to do her expansion decree. So look at all these cards that are going to be leaving the game. That's kind of painful for her, since she, you know, accumulated those cards, and she had to do actions to do that. But she wants to get the decree while she can. It's also going to give her some points, so she might be, she's getting kind of close to uh, getting, being able to get the two achievement. Um, each of these hexa hexagons count as a point for her because of Shakespeare. One, two, three, four, plus four is eight. So she's two points off. But she gets the expansion decree, which is why she got to splay up there. And that's rather nice. It'd be nice if she had more cards on her board so that it, that expansion actually um, did a little more, but still. Pegasus is a little annoyed that she had to lose um, all the cards in her hand. It's going to go ahead and do monotheism again. It's not going to affect um, Giraffe at all because Giraffe doesn't have any blue cards, but uh, Flush does. So she's going to score this, bringing her very... Oh, she actually is going to have enough for the next achievement now. Um, Flush gets to draw and tuck a one, which is a two, and so does Pegasus. And she's going to take this achievement 
at the cost of a figure for everybody else. Flesh's turn, he is going to meld this Amina Sukara. When you meld this card, score all opponent's top figures of value 4, so that's going to just be giraffes there. That's going to give him 7 points, um, and each top card with a tower on your board counts as an available achievement for you. So then he can go ahead and achieve this tools, which is uh, a one achievement. So he's kind of catching up on achievements. His two opponents, Pegasus, we're talking to you, each have two achievements and now he has one. So he's just one away. That's pretty good. Giraffe for her turn is making use of the wheel to um, force Pegasus to copy, which, which brings her forward an age quicker because Pegasus is drawing the lower level cards and also giving Giraffe more of these green cards. Green cards are really good for her right now, partially because she doesn't have to fade them. Um, she would like to get some sort of like up on Giraffe though because some of these cards that she would like to meld are blue and, uh, did I say up on Giraffe? I meant up on Pegasus. And she can't meld blue because then Pegasus is just going to take them. Or no, that's, that's what her, her past behavior would, would um, lead one to believe. And Pegasus drew and melded a 1, which was a 5, um, which, get, which covers up Sargon of Akkad. Now she's going to do her oars again. So i got to look through um, Giraffe's hand to see what she has and, and Flush as well. Good point haul for Pegasus. Didn't get anything from Flush, but that definitely bothered Giraffe some. Back to Flush. Flesh cannot resist doing this Inspire effect of scoring all bottom purple cards. So that's on everyone's board. So he's going to score his own philosophy, which maybe there's something about that. But the main reason he wants to do it is it gets rid of that split up splage that Giraffe got from her expansion decree, So, which is kind of sad. And it's moving him closer to getting rid of monotheism. He can only do it once a turn, so he can't do it again to get rid of monotheism, and I don't know if that's even what he would want to do. Let's look at his score. He's got 8, 10, 13, 16, 17 points. He can take an achievement. I think he'll go ahead and do that. Keep Pegasus from getting it. And everyone else is going to get a green card. Graf stole two cards from Flush uh, from his hand, or demanded them, and then melded this one. This is going to let her score that monotheism if it's still out there, which will... Uh, allow her to free her up to do more with the cards she has in her hand. She has some blue cards she'd really like to use. Pegasus took her third achievement, putting her in a lead, and then melded Enterprise. So monotheism is out of the picture now. Flesh doesn't love his options, so he's going to make more options. He's going to meld Isaac Newton. This lets him draw a one every time he would do an Inspire effect or draw a card and put it on anyone's board. In this case, it's going to be a five. If it's a one, that can be really annoying to people who are higher up, but where everyone's pretty much in the same age for draw purposes, even though they don't all have the same things down. Um, so he's going to go ahead and inspire Amina Sukara, score all bottom purple cards, just to annoy Pegasus and Giraffe a little bit before Amina Sukara gets faded. That's when it goes into the score pile. And then he gets a five from that and oh first he's supposed to draw this okay so he draws this and he puts it on any player's thing he wants um i think he would like it actually he's going to put it on his own board and then he gets to draw a five for the inspire all right drafts turn she's going to start to put her figures to work she's going to meld this figure here antoine van leuvenhoek and each card in hand counts as 10 points towards the cost of claiming an achievement of that card's value. So she's got a bunch of fives. The five's the next achievement. She's going to go ahead and take it because she has at least three fives, which is what you would need. I should note that um, this covered up the ability not to fade a figure, so, she, so Giraffe is going to have to fade one of these. She's going to go ahead and fade the person she just melded. She got the effect she wanted from him. Now she's got five points. Doesn't have any sixes in her hand. She doesn't know if she's going to get a bunch of sixes, and she has other plans for her hand, so she doesn't want to keep that around. Let's go on to Pegasus, who just got a new six figure um, because Giraffe achieved rivalry decree with any two figures. She does. She does have two figures, so she could go that route. Um, Beethoven's ability is a little annoying because her, her score pile is is bigger than 5, though I guess it would be 4 6s, so it would be 24. Right now she's got 22, so I guess that's not that bad. Um, and it would also give her another 7 points, so let's see what she decides to do. She also has this banking 
which could be fun. She could steal this figure from Giraffe and then also splay right, which would give her some more of those crowns and another point. So maybe she'll do both. All right, so she has this Yu Sun Sin, and she could score a top card with a tower from anywhere. The interesting thing about that is if she does it in a color which she has splayed, she has this green splayed, she could, um, oh, she's supposed to draw and score one of these. She could uh, tuck it instead and then draw and tuck a three, which might give her some more like board presence. And that would let her do her thing with her Beethoven next turn. I think she'll go ahead and do that just to try it out. Really diminishes Giraffe's board. Her board has taken a huge hit and she's tied in, in terms of achievements. So hopefully whatever she's gonna, she has planned will work out for Giraffe, but we can't root for everyone. We can root for everyone. All right, so she did that, and then she draws and tucks a three, which could give her a blue card. Nope, it does give her another purple card. Luckily that guy who takes purple cards is gone. Flesh is gonna spend the turn splaying. He already did this. This demand, it hurt um, Pegasus, it made her transfer five from her score pile to her hand. That could be good for someone. A lot of times you can score cards that are far higher in age than you, but that's not the case right now. Then I think he's gonna go ahead and use Isaac Newton to splay his green cards right. Or, or else, maybe he wants to do this instead. I think splaying is nice, but he's got this road building, and the road building, everyone would copy it. That's the thing. I don't think he wants them all to meld one or two cards. That could just get messy. There's too many uncertainties there because they can also trade cards around due to road building's kind of secondary effect, which is also kind of useful. So I think he's going to go ahead and just do this, the right splayage, kind of work on strengthening his board for later down the line because we don't have a lot of strong boards this game, really, for how far in age we are. I mean, Pegasus has this impressive rightward splay, but that's about it. So if Flush can take, achieve some dominance there, that could be helpful to him. All right, Giraffe is going in with Shea Jean the Great. She's going to draw and meld a four, but first, everyone else is going to draw and meld a four, starting with Pegasus. It's actually a six now. Covers up the masonry. That probably wasn't going to get used. Covers up the statistics. And then she gets to draw and meld a four. She really just need to get a, a six on the board so that she could use this advancement decree. Though, who knows what kind of figure she's gonna draw right now. That could be helpful to her. I guess it's just got the rivalry decree. That's gonna return this person here, uh, Newton, and three cards from his score pile. She's gonna go with the three highest. They kind of are, are competing in score a little bit, so this is going to help her be able to get the last two achievements she needs to win, because she now has four. She's getting pretty close now. Does she have a six on the board? She does. So does she have enough points? 12, 15, 17, 19, 20, 21. She does not. She needs to start getting some points, and if she can do that, she can win. That's easier said than done. All right, Flesh needs to do some melding. He figures, why not meld two? Or does he want to use vaccination? Return all the lowest cards in your score pile. Her lowest cards are just a two. Let, it would let him draw and meld a seven, which would put him in front, which is something he's kind of like to do. Um, but he wants to meld some cards, too. He was hoping to get this Catherine the Great out because she lets him draw and meld a six but he could be damaging Pegasus while he is improving himself. All right, I think he's gonna do that. Uh, return all the lowest cards in your score pile. Oh, and that also hurts Giraffe too. So she's gonna lose five points. I don't think that really hurts her too much. I think it helps her more than hurts her because she's not really going on score. Draw and meld a six. She returns a two. Draws and melds a six covers up that person, and then he gets to draw and meld a seven, which is what he really wants. Now he's got a bicycle. I don't think he wants to use the bicycle. I think he's gonna just go ahead and hit Pegasus with that again. He doesn't wanna lose. He wants her to lose. So taking away a little bit of her points, and that's gonna take away a six from her. He 
Yeah. Oop. Oh, that hurts. Covered up her Sejong the Great. Mm. All right. And he gets another seven. And it's going to be evolution. We've seen that in all of our previous two games. And Flush seems like the type of person who would like to use it. Giraffe's not going to sweat it. She's going to go ahead and use Atomic Theory. Um, Flush will get to copy, but he's already in the sevens anyway, so she does not care. So he's going to display his blue cards right, draw and mill a seven. Some explosives, and she'll do the same. Which, that's kind of useful for her at this point. She's If she dogmas this, she's going to get to, uh, once the six is gone, essentially draw and mill two sevens. But not yet. So Giraffe uh, has Emperor Meiji. That's what she just got from her figure draw. This is an interesting card. Now, how I read it, I think you can read the text from where you are, is that you can actually just meld cards from your forecast while this is out. So really, um, the key is to just get to, if she can get to the age of 10, then she can use this and you know get the eights and nines out there and just win. But I don't know if that is feasible right now, especially since she might want to use this kind of like double trouble atomic theory to kind of build up her board um, in the near term. She also has construction on her side. She could use construction to take more figures from flush and do something with them. But she's got so many figures, her, her hand's getting a little fat and clogged up. So maybe she just needs to get some things down. So I think she's going to do that. Get some industrialization out. That's a nice card. And publications. Another nice card. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I feel like I probably already went a little longer than I wanted to. Uh, this game has felt like a little tighter than the other ones. I think partially because I'm more familiar with these green cards. Um, but they're also making use of them more, which is also partially because I'm more familiar with these green cards. Um, and they know each other so well. These three, they've spent a lot of time together. Through millennia, they have been together. Um, and so there's got to be something to that. Pretty interesting situation. It still could be anyone's game. I mean, Giraffe's got that card we know about, the others don't know about, that could just let her auto win at some point. Emperor Meiji. Um, flush, kind of building up, I think, probably one of the stronger boards we have going, if you had to say. It's a little tough. Also, starting to pull ahead on score. Keeps trying to get ahead on age, but that's not happening because everyone else just keeps up so quickly. Um, kind of burns through the cards so fast. And Pegasus, who has the most achievements, but that's about it right now. Um, she kind of lost a lot of her score advantage that she had due to Flush pummeling her. And if you look at other stuff she has, you know, if she plays this right, that could be useful. Um, but the scoring part of it is probably not that useful of canning. I'm going into two, two specific things. Let's go specific next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. For now, let's keep it broad.